Hello, and welcome to this five-part series, The Performance Eye for the SQL Guy. Over this five-part series, I will be taking you through some of the features available with the release of SQL Server 2014 that can help with the performance improvement in your SQL Server environments. My name is Warwick Rudd. I'm a Microsoft Certified Master and the Principal Consultant with SQL Masters Consulting. You can read more about me from this slide yourself. Over the next five sessions, I'll be taking you through the following six features. In this first session, we're going to be having a look at the buffer pool extension. So let's get started. For us to understand what the buffer pool extension is and what it can do for us, we first need to understand what the buffer pool is. In its simplest terms, the buffer pool, or the buffer cache, is the portion of your server memory that is holding your data and index pages to improve the performance by reducing the amount of disk I.O. activity. The size of your buffer pool is dependent on a couple of factors. The amount of physical server memory on your server, the maximum and minimum server configuration settings, and the number of instances on your server. Now we all know that the easiest way to improve the performance of our OLTP system is to throw more memory at it. But this may not always be possible. This is where with the introduction of the buffer pool extension in SQL Server 2014, we can provide a workaround for the memory limitations as long as you've got access to add an SSD. In the upcoming demo, we will see how we can enable and use this feature. Once it is enabled, the buffer manager is able to use both the available memory and the buffer pool extension on your SSD to provide a tiered approach to caching. Your extension provides a larger buffer pool of lukewarm clean pages. Because only clean pages, or pages that are being read, are placed into the extension, this ensures you will not lose any data in the event of a disk crash or any other cause of a server restart. Just like in previous versions of SQL Server, the buffer manager handles the movement of pages in and out of the cache. And now, between the cache and the extension, and out of the extension in the event of any server pressure. Having the extension, and depending on the utilisation of your data, the movement of large portions of read-only data out of your buffer pool allows for larger amounts of volatile pages to reside in the buffer pool, leading to improvements in performance. The minimum size of your buffer pool extension file must always be larger than the max server memory value of your instance, or if you've already got the buffer pool extension configured and you're wanting to change it, larger than the current configuration size. Ideally, you would want to look at a ratio of 1 to 4, 1 to 8, or 1 to 16 of your max server memory configuration. So if your max server configuration setting is currently 16 gig, then you would look at having an extension to the size of 64, 128, or 256 gig. Now we can see here on this slide the benefits that can be achieved from utilising the buffer pool extension. The top three are all about gaining that tiered approach and having more memory available for our volatile pages. The one that I really like is the last one that we can see down the bottom, which is around that the buffer pool extension is configurable with failover clustered instances. So as long as you've got the ability to add an SSD to each of the nodes on your uh, failover cluster, you can utilize this feature. Like any new feature, we always need to be able to monitor what's going on or have a look at the configuration of what's been set up. So there's been a new DMV created that is available for us. This is called SysDM OS Buffer Pool Extension Configuration, where we can see what has been configured and how it's uh, what its sizes are. For those of us who use the extended events, there are four new extended events for us to monitor what's going on. We can have a look at the pages written, the pages read, the pages evicted, and the eviction thresholds recalculated. Alternatively from the extended events, we can still use performance counters, and there are eight new performance counters available in the Buffer Manager performance object. So let's now go and have a quick look at a demo. In my environment here on my laptop, 
I'm going to use the AdventureWorks DW2008. First off, so that we can have a look at the baseline as to my environment, we're just going to have a look at the uh, Mac server memory configuration, and we're going to have a look at uh, how much of the buffer pool is being used, and do we actually have the uh, buffer pool extension configured. So we can see here that my Mac server memory is set at one gig. Bearing in mind your production environment is going to be much larger, but for this demo, I've set it quite small. I'm currently using 900 meg of my buffer pool, so I haven't got a lot of space available. And we can see the last one here, which is the results from our uh, new DMV showing us that we don't currently have the buffer pool extension configured. So the next thing we want to do is we're just going to run a simple select statement to retrieve some data so that we can have a look at how our buffer pool is being used with the data that we're retrieving. Now this will take a little bit of time for it to complete. Once it does complete, we'll be able to see uh, how many pages from that particular table are residing in the buffer pool. Now our statement has completed and what we can see having a look at our buffer pool utilization, we can see that our fact, real, fact reseller sales part table is consuming the largest portion of our buffer pool. So let's go and enable the buffer pool extension. It's a very simple thing to enable. We use the Alter server configuration. We set the buffer pool extension, we turn it on. We tell it where we want the buffer pool extension file to go and the size that we want. We can then have a look at the DMV, which will show us the configuration. So we can now see that we've got an eight gig buffer pool extension file. Now, if we go and run the statement again, and we're going to just pull some more information. So I'll just kick that off and then we'll continue talking. So like before, we're running the statement from the same table. The database engine determines what pages are read-only, and it's then able to move those with the buffer manager from the buffer pool to the extension. Now we can see we've completed, and we've got a couple of rows, or I shouldn't say rows, a couple of pages that are residing in the buffer pool extension. Because the, the buffer manager needs to determine what pages are read-only, the more times we run this, it works out what our workload is and uh, that number will increase, therefore reducing the overall use of that table in the buffer pool itself. Now, one of the things that you probably will want to do is increase the size of it. First off, you might not have sized it appropriately. So we want to turn it on and give it our increase in size. You'll see that this actually gives us a failure. And that's because we can't dynamically change the size of it. We need to turn it off and then return it on with the appropriate size. Now bearing in mind, when we do this, to turn it off and then on again, that has to flush out any of the data that you've currently got sitting in your buffer pool extension so therefore you're going to take a performance hit. So you will want to schedule this appropriately and so that you don't get that performance hit, pre-warn or load that data back into the buffer pool extension. Now one of the things that you might want to do is reduce the size. So we'll turn it off like we did to increase and we reduce it from 12 gig down to 4 gig. And we can see that this fails. This goes back to the slides where it can't be smaller than one, the max server memory setting, or the current configuration setting for the buffer pool extension. So for us to reduce the size of it, we would need to turn it off like we have. We would then need to do a restart of the instance so that that can be freed. And we can then set it to the smaller value. So in summary on what we've covered off today, We've had a look at the buffer pool extension on how we can configure it, the benefits that we uh, can gain from that, and we've seen it in use. I'd like to thank you all now for listening to my session, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next session on the 
Resource Governor for IO. Thank you.